So in this video, we're going to do a little bit of exploratory work, uh, which uh, we've been doing throughout this section. And we've got here two discrete probability distributions. This one is for x, and this one is for y. So the x values can take on 3, 4, 5, and 6 with these respective probabilities, and the y's can take on 5, 6, and 7 with these probabilities. OK, now what I'm going to need uh, for this uh, exploration that we're doing here is I'm going to need to find e of x, var of x, e of y, and var of y. OK, so let's start off with that. So e of x is going to be 3 lots of 0 0.2 plus 4 lots of 0 0.3 plus 5 lots of 0 0.4 plus 6 lots of 0 0.1. OK. So 3 lots of 0 0.2, 4 lots of 0 0.3, 5 lots of 0 0.4, and 6 lots of 0 0.1, and that gets me 4.4. So e of x squared will be 3 squared times 0 0.2, plus 4 squared times 0 0.3, plus 5 squared times 0 0.4, plus 6 squared times 0 0.1. So 9 lots of 0 0.2 plus 16 lots of 0 0.3, plus 25 lots of 0 0.4, plus 36 lots of 0 0.1, and that gets me 20.2. So var of x is 20.2, take away 4.4 squared, which is 0 0.84. Okay, so I've currently got e of x as 4.4 and var of x as 0.84. Okay, right, next up I want to find e of y and var of y. So let's amend those. So e of y will be 5 lots of 0 0.1 plus 6 lots of 0 0.7 plus 7 lots of 0 0.2. So 5 lots of 0 0.1 plus 6 lots of 0 0.7 plus 7 lots of 0 0.2 gets me 6.1. So we've got e of y. e of y squared will be 5 squared times 0 0.1 plus 6 squared times 0 0.7 plus 7 squared times 0 0.2. So 25 lots of 0 0.1, 36 lots of 0 0.7 and 49 lots of 0 0.2 and we get 37.5. So var of y is 37.5 take away 6.1 squared which is 0 0.29. Okay, so what I'm now going to do, now that I've found those, is I'm going to add the two distributions together. Okay, so um, in order to add them together, what I need to think about is uh, all of the possible ways uh, that I can add the x's and y's together. Now, the, probably the best way to do this is to do it in um, like a sample space, essentially. So, for the x's, I can get 3, 4, 5, and 6. And for the y's, I can get 5, 6, and 7. And I'm going to add this together. So, it's going to be like a little oh, summing grid. So, we have 8. We have 9, 10, and 11. We've got 9, 10, 11, 12. We've got 10, 11, 12, and 13. OK. So these are now the possible values that I can get. So I'm going to build up a new table where the R values uh, are going to be taking on 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So let's call this distribution Z. So we're going to let Z be X plus Y. 
Okay, so we can have 8, we can have 9, we can have 10, we can have 11, we can have 12, and we can have 13. So now we need to find the probabilities of each of these occurring. Now, we could get an 8 by getting a 3, then a 5. Now, this is going to assume that these two distributions are independent from one another, okay? In order for me to do that, because otherwise I can't calculate that probability. So, assuming that they are independent, then the probability of getting 8 is the probability of getting 3 for x and then getting 5. So that would be 0 0.2 times 0 0.1, which is 0 0.02. Now, to get 9, there are two ways of doing it. We either get a 4, then a 5. So 4 is 0 0.3, and then a 5 is 0 0.1. So multiply those two together. Or we could have done 3, then 6. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.7, and you add those together. So we should get 0 0.17. Now for 10, we could have 5, then 5, so 0 0.4 times 0 0.1, or 4, then 6, so 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, or 3, then 7, so 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, and we get 0 0.29. Now for 11, we could get 6, then 5, so 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, or 5, then 6, so 0 0.4 times 0 0.7, or 4, then 7, so 0 0.3 times 0 0.2, and that gets us 0 0.35. Now for the 12, that's 6, then 6, so 0 0.1 times 0 0.7, or 5 then 7, so 0 0.4 times 0 0.2, and that gets us 0 0.15. And for 13, we have to have 6 then 7, so 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.02. Okay, so this is the probability distribution for x plus y, so which we've called z. So now I want to find e of z. So e of z will be 8 times 0.02, plus 9 lots of 0.17, plus 10 lots of 0.29, plus 11 lots of 0.35, plus 12 lots of 0.15, plus 13 lots of 0.02. Okay. 8 lots of 0.02, plus 9 lots of 0.17, plus 10 lots of 0.29, plus 11 lots of 0.35, plus 12 lots of 0.15, plus 13 lots of 0.02, and we get 10.5. Okay, now I need e of z squared. So 8 squared times 0.02, plus 9 squared times 0.17, plus 10 squared times 0.29, plus 11 squared times 0.35, plus 12 squared times 0.15, plus 13 squared times 0.02. So 64 lots of 0.02, plus 81 lots of 0.17, plus 100 lots of 0.29, plus 121 lots of 0.35, plus 144 lots of 100, uh, sorry, 0.15, plus 169 times 0.02. And we get 111.38. Okay. So var of z will be 111.38. Take away 10.5 squared. And we get 1.13. Now, getting to this stage, as you can kind of see, has been quite an arduous process. So what we want to do now is we want to have a look at the results that we had initially 
uh, for x and y and see if there is a way of getting from those results directly to the results that we got here. Well, if you notice, 10.5 is 4.4 plus 6.1. So actually what we've got for our example is that the expected value of x plus y, so the expected value of z, which is that, 10.5, is equal to e of x plus e of y. And 0.84 plus 0.29 is 1.13, which is that. So we've also seen for our example that var of x plus y is var of x plus var of y. So, that is what we have observed. In the next video, we are going to formalise um, and show that that is correct um, in all cases. With the caveat, of course, that um, as you have seen from this, in order to get those probabilities, uh, we had to um, assume independence. Okay? So, we will discuss that as well in the next video.